Hello, good afternoon, and welcome to Join Us today. We're coming to you live from our studios in Kokum Limni. We're on DTT because we're free to air on DSTV channel 421 and Go TV channel 125. Join News is your home of independent, fearless, and credible journalism. Coming up this afternoon, late arrival of voting materials forces polls in two regions to be rescheduled to the 21st of December out of a total of 6,200 electoral areas across the country participating in the district level elections. Also this afternoon we'll find out how Ghana became a trailblazer in global begging. That's in part three of our latest hotline documentary titled A Nation That Begs. Plus, Ningo Pram Pram MP and lead sponsor of Anti-Gay Bill wants Parliament to go to the Supreme Court over President Ekofuado's refusal to sign some private members' bill. And minority in Parliament and civil society mount pressure demanding a full-scale parliamentary probe into a contract between government of Ghana and a private entity, Strategic Mobilization Ghana Limited, to save Ghana billions of cities that would have been lost in the downstream petroleum sector. And later from the court, TS flow, a spokesperson of the new forces rearrested after court drops charges preferred against her. Details as the Ghana Immigration Service revokes Shalima's permit to stay in the country and processes her for repatriation later today. We have details of all of this. We have business, sports, world news, and showbiz coming up this afternoon. We're also live on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and X Spaces via Join News on TV. My personal handle is at the Nana Aisha. Please stay for details. <laughs> The Electoral Commission has rescheduled voting in the district assembly elections in some electoral areas in the Easting and Ashanti regions. The rescheduling of the posts, according to the EC, is as a result of late delivery of voting materials to the various polling stations. Voters are expected to cast their votes on Thursday, December 21, in the affected areas. Here's details of the statement issued a while ago by the Electoral Commission, and it will be showing shortly on your screens. It says the commission wishes to inform the general public that due to a number of technical challenges, the district level elections in some electoral areas in the Ashanti and Eastern regions have been rescheduled to Thursday, December 21. We apologize for the inconveniences caused to residents of these electoral areas. We assure the residents of the affected areas that the district level elections will be held on Thursday, December 21, and it's signed by the acting director of public relations of the Electoral Commission. Meanwhile, there are reports of poor general voter turnout at a number of polling stations visited. Pro proceedings have, however, been smooth and calm in the centers Joy News visited. Joy News' Christiana Sweetiabochi was at a number of electoral areas at Awoshi and gave accounts that the uh, exercise has been smooth. We'll be going to other areas, including Kumasi, to check out what has been uh, happening there because the, some districts in the Ashanti region have uh, been, their elections have been cancelled. But Paula Brampa Mensa of Kodeo has been assessing the preparations towards today's elections. She spoke with me earlier on News Desk. The last registration, the Electoral Commission did something they call deduplication. The duplication simply means that they are cleaning the system uh, of people who have uh, registered more than two. So the machine is able to detect that people have done two, three, four registrations, and therefore uh, the additions are deleted from the system. So you have only one uh, 
uh, biometric details in the system that allow you to vote only once. With these things in the system, I don't think the indelible ink is uh, still needed. So for me, uh, it doesn't add any plus or minuses to the process if it's added or not. Mm. Uh, and the question many ask is whether this is the time. And of course, I indicated earlier with how we face uh, problems with uh, some machines, you know, because uh, the whole thing is about verification. Without the verification, people can definitely vote twice or thrice. And with our situation, having machines breaking down here and there, uh, is it the time? Are we actually ready for this? I answer the question from two angles. One, uh, we can't have any better time to uh, 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 implement a policy if you feel we have systems in place that uh, undo the reasons why certain mechanisms were introduced into the electoral process. My problem is using digital level elections always as a test pad. That is what I, I, I refuse to accept. We have had about three, two, three by-elections in the country. When we were uh, trying to test live projection of results, we did not use digital level elections to test that. We used that San Kragua by-election to test our machines and readiness for live projection of results. Why are we using, when it happens that way, there will be little digital level elections. That's why uh, these actions, inactions, is what is projecting the turnout for digital level elections. So for the timing, we can't have any better time to try to patch the system of, of, of what mechanisms could be used after they have been experimented. As I said, indelible ink was to sh uh, show that somebody has voted at one polling station or you heard the Paula Brampa Mensa with Kodeo speaking with me earlier on Joy News Desk. Let's head to the central region and speak with Kafui Sekbo, our reporter there, for updates on the elections. Kafui, which areas have you visited so far in the central region and what can you report? Oh, Aisha, as we've all known this morning, my face took me to Umore. That is, uh, there are five electoral areas that make up the Maurice zone. And out of these five electoral areas, there are three electoral areas without ballot papers for unit committee. So as I speak to you, uh, it is only two electoral areas that are currently taking part in this exercise. The remaining three, they have recalled the materials to be scheduled for another time. And now this is, we had the opportunity to speak to some of the aspirants and they've expressed their disappointment that this whole exercise has really cost them a lot and looking at the, the extent of events, their investment has gone the drain. So they were not happy about the letter committee's organization of the, uh, the exercise. All right, Kafui, have there also been issues with um, uh, machines and all of that? I must say that with the areas that we visited so far, within the Abra Tebuka marketing at Mori, no uh, uh, machine malfunctioning. All, it's only one area that they did manual verification. After the, our visit to Mori, that is Abra Tebuka Mankesi, we had the opportunity also to visit Nyamransa three. Uh, electoral areas and three electoral areas at Eguati, all within the Fantaman uh, constituency. And I must say that everything has been successful. Machine is working effectively. You are the Kafu Justice Sopo reporting from the central region. Meanwhile, some school authorities across Techuman South constituency are unhappy with the conduct of the district assembly elections during school hours as the situation is affecting academic activities. They are however appealing to government to consider holding such electoral exercises during weekends, on holidays, or when schools are on vacation to curb the situation as well as whip up public interest in the exercise and as Sabit has more. So we are here at the Techiman Islamic you know primary polling center where election is already on uh, here in the Techiman South uh, constituency of the Bono East region. Voting started at seven however school is in session and uh, school authorities are unhappy with the conduct of the exercise during school hours particularly uh, considering the fact that school is in session and the school is also writing exams, they say the exercise is conflicting with academic activities. We've been speaking with school authorities and this 
is you know what we've been saying in relation to this particular development. Currently, we are having a, we are in an exam week, and at the same time, we are having an exam. And like you can see, uh, exams and at the same time, conducting uh, conduction of an election, and the two doesn't match. Uh, in fact, it is causing some some sort of inconvenience among the teachers, the children, and even particularly looking at they are using our premises, our tables and chairs. So right now, exams, some of the children has to be some of the we have to send some of the children out for the few decks around to cater for few ones who can take the exam as I'm speaking now. So after they are finished, then the rest also come and take. So it doesn't work out well for I mean right now exams and conduct the election at the same time. These head teachers have a suggestion. They wish next time elections are conducted uh, should be done, uh, you know, during the weekends or on holidays, uh, or possibly uh, government should factor giving set schools where elections are conducted uh, some special holidays so that uh, the exercise wouldn't be conflicting with academic activities. In future, I wish the election commission could provide their own means of or uh, their own furniture to help us to. Con have the election and uh, at the same time children also can have access to their classroom, their tables and their chairs, likewise the teachers. Or they should have holiday for the school, the center where where the school is, so that they will have some sort of holiday so that they can conduct the system and conduct it well. We've also been engaging some uh, electoral officers and they, they share with us their frustrations. Uh, they, they, they say even furnitures for them to sit on because school is already in session is a difficult uh, thing. So uh, next time they are appealing to authorities to factor this uh, to keep up, you know, um, turnout because they say enough, you know, um, importance has not been attached to this particular, uh, you know, exercise compared to national or general uh, elections. I'm saying that uh, today is a major national exercise and it has coincided with examination students are writing their exam today so i'm thinking that today should have been declared a public holiday so that the exercise can be very successful now we don't even have chairs they have taken it from us that they still want to use it to write the exams so we are standing conducting this exercise and if it had been a major uh, election like parliamentary and presidential it would be so so politicians should give equal importance to this exercise as they give to the presidential and the parliamentary election, so that the citizen will see that this exercise too is important. The situation isn't any different here at the Baptist Primary and Junior High School polling centers, where uh, the, the school is equally writing its exams and the exercise is ongoing. Headmistress of the school uh, say um, the situation is adversely affecting, you know, uh, teaching and learning. We are writing our last paper today, but due to the voting exercise it has affected us in so many ways they've taken all our chairs the children have no tables and chairs to sit on to write the exams and we have a lot of people here and the children cannot concentrate in writing the paper so i wish that next time they should see to it that the exercise doesn't conflict with school activity. So even though turnout has been extremely low in most of the polling centers we've visited, you know, quite, it is quite too early to suggest that uh, the situation will be the same throughout uh, the process. We are hoping that by the close of the polls, we will have more persons turning out to cast their ballots. From the Islamic Primary Polling Center here in the Tachiman South constituency, my name is Anas Sabit reporting for joining us. Let's now head towards Kumase where Nana Boache Yadon reports some candidates in the district level elections have besieged the office of the Electoral Commission in the Ashanti region to demand answers as to the postponed polls. The candidates complained of losses made after preparing meals and giving out transportation support to voters. They want the EC to give answers to those questions. My colleague Nana Boache Yadon is at the EC office. He joins us live for more. Nana Boache. What more can you report from where you are? 
So, Aisha, I can report that these um, candidates are from the Minshia South constituency and they are here at the EC office in the Ashanti region to demand answers as to why the uh, election, which was supposed to take off today, has been postponed. Or we know that the EC has responded and has issued a letter um, to explain why the election is not going to take place today, but rather on Thursday. But then they are here at the Ashanti regional EC office to speak to the EC boss Mr. Banobiu to demand answers as to why um, they did not get earlier information or details on why their election is not coming off today. So you can see a number of people seated here at the EC office um, to demand answers from the EC already. Um, although their elections from um, in Shiaiso constituency is not going to be held today, their electoral materials are in. And then these people here, these candidates are also here at the EC office to demand answers from the electoral commissioner. We will get to interact with some of the aspirants and find out from them why they are here. We know the EC, uh, the EC has um, issued issued a press release to explain the reasons why the election is not taking off, coming off today. So why are they still here? Boss, why are you still here? Because we know that the EC has issued a letter to explain the reason why the election is not coming off today. Thank you very much. <clears throat> the reason why, I didn't hear you say, um, baby, I told you, I told you, CPC electoral area, Yen Twaba. Na Yen Tiasi, I didn't think Yen Twaba. It's your by Yisu office say, you be busan on the reason why Yen Twa Yen Twaba or Yen Pesuaso. Yen Tiasi, and you think you're by Mobile Easy, any more din come more, watch him say a challenge ka crabbing up and turn on to minimum and Cassa. I didn't think I still, Mother Sotatian say. Say, if said challenge, your challenge Ben Abba. That means um, the boss, the Yisu boss, on your competent. Say, challenge your bar, da da da. Omobe Fale, that I don't know. I don't know. Oman, Oman, Shell, Omun no me, no one to Tomu no me. That means that woman on your competent. It's blame me. I only say the bono. Now I'm buying you free or because we feel on your competent. So your problem on hope. I didn't tell baby to abana baby to abba. That means Momo more interest for you. Me 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 say Momo ye ni ama bebri say be ya mo be man krofa abba be to abba bo 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 so chere me. Eden amu ye say be ya mo be attractive voters. One, ye no one no adiani say on say obi obi to abba like in su obi no ya to tone su ya to tone ya no one adiani. En krofa fa kafri no ye de kaka kuzi baby baby. Edi oma ba ama ni ni na ye ka. Why is Obeka say yeah in the end to abba? I didn't see the one sound country uh, before the election. I didn't up to now. See, I'm my easy office here. Okay, I'm my easy office here. I can't even say BBC or Koso. It is step Ben and we'll take it next because he said when you release the um, letter, watch it after here. What are you doing next? The next steps, and you say, you're before you're watching. So, a more interest what they are, and your moon die if you say, Oh, my betum, my maho. Umbaba betum, my ma, say, interest, panty, or moon chest, tino, moya sardina, and your moon die. Because your mamma, oh, the interest of that. Okay, so they are here to demand access from the EC boss, Mr. Banobio, as to why their um, election would not be held today, but rather um, on Thursday. He says that they woke up very early to, to, to make an announcement to people to come and vote. The voters came, but then unfortunately they were asked to return home because they are not going to vote today. They made um, financial support to them, transportation support, and then also prepared some meals, but unfortunately everything has to go waste today. So these are the people who have been Siege the EC office here in the Ashanti region to demand answers. Aisha, over to you. Abuachi Adam uh, reporting from Kumasi. Let's now listen to Sweetie Abuchi, who earlier spoke with some um, people who were trying to cast their votes in some polling stations in Accra. Not using the indelible ink which in a way I've observed that is speeding up the process. We uh, caught up with Honorable Bashir Mohammed, who is the MCE for Gas Central. In a moment, he will be joining me to understand uh, how he's seeing the processes. Honorable Bashiru, please join me. Thank you so much for joining us. So far, how do you see the electoral processes in your uh, municipality? Very smooth. It's going on smoothly. So we hope that it will continue um, going on like this till the end of the exercise at 5 p.m. 
The NCE and the EC all said that they were positive that the voter turnout for this year's election would be high. Is this in any way reflecting in the polling stations, considering that it's not so crowded, but people do come in and go? Do you think that by the end of the day, the voter participation or turnout would be as high as you expected? Um, certainly to creep. We've done a lot of sensitization. Even today, the EC, the NCC, they are going around with the advanced... Um, educate, sensitizing people to come and then um, vote. So today is a working day. We've had a series of community engagements with the constituents. Some of them have assured us way before today that they will go to work, report before they come back to vote. So certainly we are expecting that um, not less than 60% turnout um, is possible. Well, uh, Honorable Dan Boche mentioned that or he, he appealed to the upper class citizens to also participate in this year's election. Do you think that that has been affected or that is uh, reflecting in the kind of people that are coming in to vote at the various polling stations? Very well. Honorable Dan Boche is a luminary when it comes to politics. We all learn from him. And um, really, um, his predictions are right. You can see the woman who just voted. I mean, an elderly woman. Well, yeah, we saw uh, Mr. Donko and his wife. I think Mr. Donko should be about 90 years, and then his wife about 75 or 80. So really, that attests to what um, Honorable Damboche has said. And really, so when you meet him, tell him that, in fact, um, his predictions are right. Well, thank you very much. Before I let you go, do you think that you did enough to ensure that you get the 60% or more that you are anticipating? What we have to do is to sensitize the people, apart from the general election um, campaign and sensitization that has gone on at the national level. Um, at our level, we've done a lot of sensitization, using vans going around the National Commission for Civic Education. We have engaged them even today. And the Electoral Commission, we've provided them with... Yesterday we had MUSEC meeting and everything that needs need, need to be discussed, we've, we've discussed. So I think that we've done all that is needed for um, the success of um, this exercise. And we hope that, um, just as I said earlier, they, uh, some of them have gone to work. Um, they work. Away from the district level uh, elections, from Eurobond darling boy to debt relief seeker, that's the story of Ghana, a nation that begs. A Joy News Hotline documentary by Isaac Ophieje tracks how Ghana got suffocated with commercial loans forcing it to seek haircuts worth about 40% from its creditors in the international capital market. Here are excerpts of the third part of the documentary, A Nation That Begs. In 2022, Ghana faced economic challenges as emerging markets experienced soaring coupon rates for bonds, rendering them exorbitant. Consequently, only three countries, Nigeria, South Africa, and Angola, managed to issue eurobonds in the first half of the year. Other nations, including Kenya and Ghana, were priced out of the international capital markets due to unsustainable interest rates. When we started getting the downgrades and others, that we better fix it because the domestic market was just too shallow. It was quite clear that we're in too deep and we're in above our heads. And so once the rating downgrade came, that sealed our fate. We could no longer go back to the international capital markets to borrow, at least not on the European market, until we address issues of debt sustainability. You are mindful about the, the cost of assessing capital from the markets. Okay, and especially when your, your rating has gone down the way it is, we are almost in a junk territory. Right, so one basic understanding of the market is that when you come onto the market unattractive, you'll be punished. For Ghana, the burden of debt servicing obligations, limited to interest payments only, was projected to reach approximately $5 billion at both domestic and external levels in 2023. Unlike its 16th enrollment in 2015, Ghana's unsustainable debt position was certainly a huge obstacle in obtaining an IMF deal. This meant a lot of conditions had to be met. The IMF's message to Ghana was very simple restructure your debt or no bailout package. I also want to assure all Ghanaians that no individual or institutional investor, including pension funds, 
the government treasury bills or instruments will lose their money as a result of our ongoing IMF negotiations. There will be no haircuts. So I urge all of you to ignore the false rumors. Instantly, the market knew the president wasn't speaking the truth. You see that right after the president made a statement, the reactions were more or less to reject the statements. And therefore, uh, uh, my expectation is that any investor who probably took a decision on the back of that wasn't an investor, was probably a lotto doctor. Part three of the nation that begs airs today, December 19, on the Join News channel at 5.30 p.m. To other stories, Member of Parliament for Ningo Pram Pram and lead sponsor of the controversial anti-LGBTQ bill, Sam George, warns Parliament to head to the Supreme Court for an interpretation of Article 108 of the Constitution. President Ekofuado told Parliament his refusal to sign some private members' bill the House had passed was because they breached the said section of the Constitution. But Sam George, whose anti-gay bill could face a similar challenge warns Parliament to file a suit to the Apex Court to settle the matter. The resolution to this matter is for all of us to go to the Supreme Court. Parliament must go to the Supreme Court to seek interpretation of uh, Article 108 and let the judges distinct it for us. Is it the position of the law? Is it the intentment of the framers of the 1992 Constitution that Parliament cannot on its own pass any legislation? And then let's know that parliament we have here is a rubber stamp parliament. It cannot pass legislation. But let's go to, it's not about suing President Akufuado. It's about getting a distinction of what the law really is. And that will guide all of us going forward. Let's stick with the courts because spokesperson of the new for Shalim Mabuisi has been rearrested by the Ghana Immigration Service after charges preferred against her were dropped by the state in court today. Shalim Mabuisi, a Belgian national, was being held facing for obtaining a student, uh, a student card that has been arraigned at the Kanishi District Court. State prosecutors led by Ghana Immigration Service on Tuesday dropped the charges against her, but she was shortly rearrested and whisked away amidst protests from her lawyers. Legal Affairs Correspondent Richard Kwejonyaku was in court. <laughs> So we are here at the precinct of the Kaneshi District Court where earlier in the court, the prosecution said they had dropped the charges uh, preferred against the spokesperson for the new force, Shalima Abuisi. Just as they stepped down, the state prosecutors, the Ghana Immigration Service, re-arrested Shalima Abuisi and the lawyers of the lady would not have any of that they said that it is an affront to human rights and so they have filed several actions at the human rights court and they will compel the ghana immigration service prosecutors in this case to appear before the court because this action is really in an arbitrary manner and they will do everything possible to protect the human right the fundamental human rights of Shalima Abuisi who has just been waxed away in their vehicle Francis Xavier Sosu who is lawyer for Shalima Abuisi is distraught is unhappy with the development behavior is this you came to the court and say that you have asked that the court the charges against the person be dropped the charges are dropped the person is discharged and then you banded the person as if it's a common criminal here. If you really want the person in your office, from here we'll come to the office. Last week when the court said we should be there three times, we were there every single day. So if you knew you were going to do this, what kind of disgrace is this? What kind of international disgrace is this? I mean, are we living in a democracy or we are living in a jungle? Are we living in a democracy or we are living in a jungle? So has she Honestly, been... I'm, I'm sincerely disappointed. Because you, the immigration officers, came here and said that her permit has been revoked. If you have revoked a permit, where is the evidence of the revocation? 
You should have brought it to the court and show it to everybody. Then we would then say that, okay, you have revoked a permit, so you can take it. You didn't do that. Then you banded the person as if he's a common criminal and sent it away like that. Why do you behave this way? Why do you behave this way? That is complete assault. It was completely uncalled for. It's completely uncalled for. And I think that, look, we must, we must really watch it. Where we are going, I think that we are sending the wrong signal to the international community. After all, there are Ghanaians who are also in other countries, right? If your citizen is, is, is treated this way in another country, will you be happy? Do you know the number of Ghanaians who are abroad? Around, do you know the number of Ghanaians in Belgium? If your citizens are treated this way, will you be happy? Well, I'll leave so, you. So, so, so what, what, what do you do now? Well, we have filed a number of actions. As we speak to you now, we have filed an action in the, in the Human Rights Court against them for all other processes they may want to take for purposes of either trying to remove her from the country or not. I'm hoping that by the close of the day or by afternoon, they will all be served with those actions. And they will appear in court to come and answer for what they are doing. Because we knew that there's the likelihood that they will be behaving in the manner they are behaving this way. And this is so arbitrary. This should not be tolerated in any democracy. So um, here you see the parents of uh, Shalima Abuisi, um, very distraught. They are unhappy with the development and so um, they are moving in a car. They are heading straight to the Ghana Immigration Service where their daughter uh, has just been picked up by the Ghana Immigration Service. It's quite a scene here and the lawyers for Shalima Abuisi are very very angry they can't believe what just happened they say that the state prosecutors are acting in an arbitrary manner and they have filed a number of actions some at the human rights court and then they will make the prosecution i mean appear before court because they say that this action that has been taken is quite uncalled for reporting for Joy News from the Kaneshi District Court. My name is Richard Kwejunya Akun for Joy News. Away from the court, there's pressure from the minority in parliament and civil society for a full-scale parliamentary probe into a contract between government of Ghana and a private entity, Strategic Mobilization Ghana Limited, to save Ghana billions of cities that would have been lost in the downstream petroleum sector. According to an investigative piece by the Fourth Estate, the contract is questionable but has since been expanded by Finance Minister Ken Oforiata, which will cause the state hundred million dollars in the next 10 years we'll hear from the minority shortly but first assets for of the three billion cities lie in a control room in Tema in the greater Accra region officials of strategic mobilization Ghana limited explain their services to the fourth estate news team we have transistors uh, which are engulfed in the ultrasonic lampons or the real sets the company tried to convince our news team of its wild claims that it had helped to save billions of Ghana cities that would have been lost in the downstream petroleum sector but for its intervention. More importantly, it tried to justify why it receives payments worth millions of Ghana cities from the government of Ghana through its contract with the Ghana Revenue Authority. Currently, we are installing a tank system. By the end of our second day at SML Ghana, however, we were convinced that a company, with the help of Ghana's media, had made false and unsubstantiated claims and is paid millions of cities in a deal that appears to lack value for money. According to the minority spokesperson on Mines and Energy, John Janapo, who is also on the Finance Committee, the deal should be immediately suspended pending the parliamentary probe. Of Ghana, led by the Ministry of Finance and SML Limited, to undertake some so called uh, assurances, revenue assurance. And uh, first of all, let me commend the fourth estate, Manasseh, and uh, the media houses who conducted this investigation. Indeed, the minority has discussed this topical issue and will be moving processes in Parliament to ensure that there's full-scale investigation. Because we do not believe that there's value for money. This contract is a rip-off. This contract only ends up uh, filling the pockets of greedy politicians and individuals because 
Uh, just a couple of weeks ago, the Mines and Energy Committee visited NPA and we were made aware that they've put in place enough systems, enough mechanism, enough infrastructure to ensure that all the loopholes and all the losses are safeguarded and that they've even hooked up with the Ghana Revenue Authority to ensure that all those assurances are catered for. And so the question is that why would you need this? Even more importantly, it's turned out that the so-called three billion savings was nothing but a host. We cannot allow the taxpayer to be burdened with such unnecessary contracts that only go a long way to fill the pockets of individuals. And so we would advise that immediately that contract is suspended pending the parliamentary investigation. And when we go into it and we find out that indeed all those allegations are true, we would ensure that these contracts is abrogated because it doesn't serve the interests of this republic. We're still live on Joy News today. We're coming to you from our studios in Kokum Lemne. Let's take a break. When we return, we'll bring you business. Hello and welcome to the business segment on Joy News today. My name is Emma Davis. Let's start from the hospitality industry. As players are concerned about the impact of the country's exchange rate on the operations, according to Managing Director for African Works Ghana, and East Africa, Josephine Doga. This is killing their businesses. She spoke to Joy Business at the official opening of African Works co working office space at the Kempinski Hotel. The hospitality industry players say their businesses are on the verge of collapsing due to the high taxes imposed on them as a result of the disgruntling economy. Managing Director for African Works Ghana and East Africa, Josephine Doga, said. Their woes will be deepened if more taxes are imposed on their businesses. Well, the uh, challenges that I face as an individual with respect to the service that I provide is the fact that it's probably um, not always easy to convince people of the kind of um, service that we are offering because people are used to the old traditional um, office space use taking long leases taking large offices and you know just spending money on costs that really need to be redirected into the company so trying to help them to understand that if you if you take a co-working flexible space you get to share the costs and reduce your costs and then increase your your profits well for instance it affects us in there because we take we take um, leases as well from from landlords or this called commercial buildings so the leases sometimes the uh, rent as well is escalates the escalation of the rent fees goes high a bit and then we we always have challenges to be able to um, bring it let's trickle down to our clients and our clients are not really happy with the fact that the the cost of their space is going high we usually don't increase the rent that much but we have issues with the exchange rates here and there because most of these commercial buildings they all charge in um, usd so that that affects us to a very high extent africa works is bringing co-working to accra giving ambitious businesses the opportunity to grow and reach their goals to the financial sector players in the financial market are confident of a boost in trading activities in 2024 according to the president of the aci financial markets association ghana lawrence Buampong, current economic indicators could usher in the needed confidence after the market recorded some volatility post the domestic debt exchange here's more ACI Financial Markets Association Ghana is a body of financial markets professionals with a mandate of educating market participants and deepening collaboration with relevant stakeholders to ensure a robust market. Despite the volatility suffered on the market in recent times, mainly due to the effects of external and internal economic shocks, practitioners are upbeat about the positive outlook for the coming year. Lawrence Osilaja Buampo is the president of ACI Financial Markets Association and has been speaking to Joy Business at the association's end of year awards and fundraiser. Generally, we all know what has happened on the market and we know how this has affected the investment landscape and trading activities generally and investor confidence. So, yes, we want to dip in the market next year and because we believe that there is an opportunity for growth, we think that all is not lost and we think that as ACI members, as key stakeholders in driving the financial market, we can really play an active role in this space. 
place. He further called for innovative products and deep in collaborations with stakeholders to drive inclusion. We obviously would want to see a lot more um, diversification next year. We would want to see a lot of innovation. We would want to see institutions come up with newer products, you know, and deepening our markets. And I think that this is where ACI will play a leading role in, in enhancing some sort of training um, that will help achieve all of these. Some of the award winners echoed optimism ahead of the coming yeah. In terms of what is going to happen maybe 2024 and post 2024, I see light at the end of the tunnel. I can see that we are actually turning the corner. Inflation has dropped to um, levels that in the past 19 months have not been there before. And that gives some kind of credence to the fact that in the market, real return is returning to the market where investments are now being um, at the rate above inflation. And that gives some kind of uh, um, uh, cushion to inflation. The market has to recover, um, the economy has to recover for everything to be tipped up um, for, for everyone. So I look forward to a recovered economy generally and also from a market's point of view because the only way we make money is when there's activity. So if the market hasn't recovered, we can't actually make any money or do anything good in the market. ACI Financial Markets Association hopes to embark on various sensitization projects, including technical training sessions for media practitioners. That's all for today's business segment. My name is Emma Davis. For more business news, do log on to myjoyonline.com. Up next is sports. Please stay. Let's do sports now on Joy News today with me, Muftao Nabila Abda, a ranking member on a parliamentary select committee on sports. Commander Mensa Woyome has revealed that the Minister of Youth and Sports, Mustafa Yusuf, has promised them that he would liaise with the Ghana Football Association to give them details of Ghana's World Cup prize money following a report by Joy Sports that the Ghana Football Association declared $7.9 million instead of $9 million. An email to Joy Sports from FIFA had indicated that the Ghana Football Association received $9 million as attached in the FIFA financial report for 2022 in page 2. As a subsequent email from the World Football Governing Body also said that the Ghana Football Association was credited with the amount indicated in the FIFA financial report for 2022. However, the GFA told government that they received $7.9 million. Following the report by Joy Sports, Parliament is demanding answers from the Ministry of Youth and Sports, and Mensa Woyeme has revealed the minister has promised to get them those details. Speaker. The government funded our participation in this uh, FIFA World Cup. And we all know the story. We came back home after the first round. But we are aware or have heard that some transfers have happened in terms of the prize money for FIFA. And uh, it was a matter we discussed or raised at the committee and the minister has assured us that we will, he will be forthcoming with details of it in terms of liaising with the FA so that we will see what actually came so that the report in the media can be put to uh, a proper perspective. There will be the need for us to understand how much money was actually transferred and how much is coming to the ministry and how the ministry intends spending it to benefit the development of sports and in particular football, so that we all appreciate where we are heading. President of Ghana Athletics, Bao Fusene, has revealed that his outfit will be training uh, athletes and officials ahead of the African Games 2023. The event will start on March 8, 2024, and Ghana Athletics is expected to play a crucial role in the competition. We hear from the president, who spoke to Joy Sports following a press conference that happened on Monday. It means so much for me. That is why we are not taking the African games lightly at all. We are training our coaches, we are training our technical officiating officials, and our athletes are also training seriously, both at home and in abroad. So we are doing all this thing together because we cannot be in Ghana here and people will come from other countries to come and do the officiating for us. So we are training our officiating officials, we are training up to 120 officiating officials to level one. 
so that we can be able to officiate effectively and efficiently during the African Games. Our coaches, we are getting all our technical brains in the whole world. We are getting our foreign athletes and are getting our foreign coaches in the short Geza, Eric and Cancer, Eric and Fum, all of them have agreed to come and support us. So we are not taking the African games lightly at all. We are bringing everything that we have to bear. And we can also do that without the financial support from the ministry and the NSA, for, for that matter, the government. But we will do our possible best to get Ghana stand high. Now, the foreign-based athletes, we are engaging them every now and then. We've written to them. We've written to their schools and their coaches. So they are clearly aware the dates of the competition. So most of them will come a week before the competition starts because they also have other assignments or other obligations with their schools. We cannot just take them away from the school because the school is paying them, they have the education there. But we've spoken to the coaches, they will give them enough time for, that, for them to come back to Ghana here to compete for Mother Ghana. But we can't get them for a month. We can get them at least two to three weeks that the school allow them to come. And they are aware, and they are trained. We are just hoping that Ghana Athletics will be the number one federation in the country. That's your sports for now. We do have more sports stories on my joyonline.com. Up next is World News. Time check out what's making headlines elsewhere. The anti-gay law has caused global outrage with the World Bank halting new loans to Uganda and the U.S. imposing visa restrictions on key officials. Anyone convicted of being involved in homosexual acts faces live imprisonment under the law which was enacted in May. Rights groups have asked judges to announce the law arguing that it violated the right to equality and dignity. The government is defending in the case in the Constitutional Court saying the law protects traditional family values. The law imposes the death penalty for so-called aggravated cases, which include having gay sex with someone below the age of 18. An overwhelming majority of lawmakers voted it uh, for it in Parliament, and it came into effect after President Yoweri Museveni approved it. A recent report by rights groups said that more than 300 human rights abuses have been recorded against LGBTQ plus people in Uganda. Uganda in the first eight months of this year, including beatings, torture, arrests, and evictions from homes. The U.S. has responded to the legislation by saying that Ugandan goods will stop receiving preferential access to its markets from next year because of its human rights record. That does it for World News. Up next is Showbiz. Time now for showbiz and music maestro Kojo Inchi would headline the night with the Stars Musical Concert in Kumasi on December 25, 2023. The Christmas Day event is billed to be the biggest concert in the Garden City this Yuletide. Cheering up for the event, the legendary Kojo Inchi says he's ready to spice the festivities with a quality musical performance, citing Kumasi as the best location to perform. The biggest music jams for the Christmas season in Osaikum is a night with the stars on December 25 at the Rattray Park. This is, a, is, a, is the pl best place to be. Mm. You know the reason why I say that? Tell me. <laughs> okay. Accra, you have everybody flocking to Accra. It's the capital. And when I come here, and you may be a bear woman. When a tear say, I start to fall the tears. Exactly. I start to fall the tears. Exactly. So this is the place to be. Mm. And when I'm when I'm performing for them, each song means something else for someone, and mm. it's it's a good place. But always like them, it's a privilege that someone will say, I'm paying this amount to go listen to Kojenchi and the other crew, KD. Uh, Kim Promise. Kim Promise will be there. You know, Kofi, uh, Kofi Kineta will be there. Kofi Junior will be there. Yeah. If they come to listen to us, it's a blessing to us. You know, at a certain point, I was feeling I am a blessing to them. Mm. No, but if they come to spend that time to come and listen to you, it's a blessing. Now, 
FYI is gearing up to attempt breaking the Guinness World Record for the longest singing marathon by an individual during an event scheduled for December 24-27 in Accra. You need to look out for all those uh, events coming up uh, this Christmas. That's how we wrap up the bulletin. My name is Aisha Ibrahim. Log on to myjohnline.com uh, for more of the news and updates of all the uh, developing stories. Do enjoy the rest of our programs.